Before we begin, let's start out the new year with some mentions of some great stuff, everybody. First of all, the Packfiller online store is on fire. Not literally, but we are moving merch. I'm moving merch. Shirts, yeah. mugs, caps, hats are coming. You should see the new patches I got. Oh, man. They're pretty cool. I'm going to put them on hats. Socks, stickers, and even jerseys are in stock and ready to print and send. Check out what's available and show your pack filler pride. What are you touching? You were talking about those the other day. No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Scratch Labs is still with us. That's right. The cleanest, purest, genuine source of refueling continues to innovate and get us all to the finish line from powders for your bottle to choose for your face with bars for high-carb options in between. Scratch fuels the fun. Oh, the chocolate recovery mixed with the coffee makes a brilliant post-ride mocha. If you haven't had it yet. I haven't had it hot yet, though. A yeah. Recovery? You, I bet you can have those hot. Mm-hmm. That'd be really wonder if What is it? Lemony. I wonder if you could do like some kind of like a hot toddy type of thing out of a scratch drink, you know? They have. They do. They have recipes on their website. Mm-hmm. For alcohol. Yeah, yep. you, Mr. Dry January dipshit. <clears throat> Maybe it's going to just be dryish January. Yeah, my, yeah, my wife go. called it tonight. Yeah. She called it damp January. My wife said I damp, love that. Damp, damp. January. Yeah. Yeah. Dryer. Yeah. Dryer. Dryish. <laughs> That's going to be easy from December. Yeah. Less wet. Moist. Moist. <laughs> moist. Yeah. <laughs> my wife didn't That's say moist. Me. I promise she didn't. Uh, Gooder sunglasses. I want to personally thank Gooder for all the great years of support. I'm not sure if Gooder's going to be with us next year. They've got to change command. The, the the great Doug Ori is is on to different pastures, and so so. And you know what? I saw a post from Phil Gaiman. 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 I always get it wrong. Gaiman. Phil. Uh, the other day, uh, thanking his past sponsors, even though he didn't have them anymore. And I don't know if Gooder's going to be with us anymore, but w- it was a great several years. A uh, great deal on eyewear out there. Hands down, it has been a great three years with those guys. Be sure to check out all the brilliant, non-slip, polarized, stylish options out there through the website link. Hurry, because I think the code PACKFILLER15 is closing up shop soon, so grab them for the new year. Let's go play bikes! No new theme yet. Hi, Lance. Got the bumper, so this is going to be really hard not to drink with those in front of me. Oh, you should taste this. The stout, it's it's really good. good. Yeah. Want me to pour you one? (laughs) You're the devil on the shoulder. Do it. Do it. Uh, Well, if you're listening to this at the gym, chances are you're surrounded by the resolution crowd. And if you see somebody on a stair machine with their arm locked, holding themselves up, just hold one finger up right now and maybe somebody else in the gym will see you. If you see an uptight bro wanting to get to the free weights, put two fingers up. And if you see somebody who's definitely skipped leg days, cough out loud. I just want to see if that would work for anybody oh. in the gym. <laughs> you see those people? Go know that's no, on the Stairmaster, when they're doing this, they're yeah. like, hey, they're just their legs are fine, but they're holding themselves up with yeah. their locked out arms. Yeah. I freaking hate that shit. Yeah. People do crazy things at the gym. Yeah. You know what it just dawned on me? If I put a list of every every time I said I hate that shit, that would pretty much be everything in the you world. You could paint this list. room in like twelve point font with that list. I'm a bad person. You're welcome. As of my writing show prep this morning, we have a full panel here for the first time in about five weeks, and it came true. It's a Festivus miracle. Let's catch up, everybody. Tonight's prologue question for the panel. What's a New Year's resolution you know you should make but won't? Give a second. And then I'm going to start off with he's the guy who always has another year in him, Mr. Paul Main. How are you, man? All right. Yeah. yeah. I've always got next year, and this is next year now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It is next year. Yeah. Oh, it's next year. It's finally. Yeah. Wow, the theme ended quickly. Uh, what's your What's your uh, New Year's resolution that you uh, aren't going to hold up, but you should? Hold? I should, but I know, I, and it, and it benefits more my wife than anything else. It's my morning constitution. I need to take a scrub brush to that after every usage. Instead of leaving scrub splatter. brush to yourself or the toilet? No, no, the toilet. Oh, God. Why should what? I scrub Are brush? We? No. I don't stand up and wipe like some people. <laughs> the first visual of 2024 for everybody. Paul leaving. Paul leaving a grenade I, I hear in the my toilet. wife going, 
You didn't clean the toilet. Oh, dang it. Jeez, it looks like Vanderpool's jersey yeah. in here. It's an eagle's nest. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> we're off to a roaring start in 2024. Next, he's the guy who always has another tear in him. So I said another beer in him. Now we got a another tear in him because he's a whiny bitch, Mr. <laughs> Sam Waples. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the resolution that I should do would be to show up to team rides on time. But that's not going to happen. No, probably not gonna happen. I have next year to do that. <laughs> nice. It's always next year. It's always All next right. year. Yeah. All right. Third, he's the guy who has always has another beer in him, Mr. David Waples, because you are the guy who masters the itch. The, the smile on your face. If you're on YouTube right now, the dipshit grin on his face right now is poetry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what's your what's your resolution? Make one around that. Yeah. Uh, More of that. More of that grin. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, I really just think there's no healthy amount of Instagram. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll still use it. You? Oh, you you would like to. You rarely use it, though. I I guess you use Danielle's, though, so that doesn't really count. Yeah, I don't use it very often, but, like, you know. Are you a poacher? Do you scroll a lot of other people's posts? What do you mean like on the do you Instagram? do you watch other people honestly what it is Sam actually sends Danielle a ridiculous amount of videos all the time yeah. and there's like a, probably every day or every other day we sit down for like 20 minutes and watch videos from Sam and then and then David <laughs> responds with all fat joke ones to me don't get a TikTok yeah no no it's worse absolutely not it's bad yeah but, yeah so you know but that's like actually really like I enjoy that part with Danielle because we laugh together but you know that's good, but when you're scrolling and I stuff, mean, that's yeah, just no some good sort amount. of entertainment. Like if people watch a, TV, yeah. if you're not like in, endlessly spending time, just like yeah, I mean, gosh, people will sit down and just scroll through for hours. I can scroll through TikTok for and uh, next thing I know, two hours have passed. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not kidding. I mean, I can blow funny. twenty minutes pretty easy, but yeah. after that, I was like, oh, it's time to go. Yeah. So okay, I get, that's I'll, I'll let you have that one. Um, so it was another year, another tear, another beer, and uh, he's the guy who I'm just happy is here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's nice. You know how many yeah. kids want to hang out with their dads when they're in their twenties? Yeah, Probably a not a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's and I'm act- actually happy he's here because not only because you're obvious character and input in the show, but you're running the cameras, and I'm terrible at that. I put it on like auto switch when Jackson's not here. Yeah. So it's just like whoever's talking, it's you know. Paul could be filling a beer and the camera's on him mm-hmm. or something like that. So I'm bad at that. How are you, man? Good. Thanks. Um, let's see. Resolutions for next year that I should do. Um, I should probably clean my bike a little bit more, <laughs> but I'm probably not going <laughs> well, to. Can't, you can't get past that scratch. Well, yeah. When I mean, it's really just blaring you in the eyes like yeah. it does every day. Yeah. Um, wow. But yeah, I, I got to maybe do that a little bit more. Clean the chain twice a year instead of once, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Twice All that stuff. Get a new chain and come over and we'll we'll drop it in the wax. Yeah, that's the plan. Want to do it very often. Yeah, yeah. That was the plan. So I'll probably do that in end of February. Twenty twenty eight. I mean, yeah. like, how long yeah. is that really good for? I know we've talked with like a month. Then no, no, it's like a thousand miles. Yeah, on a oil dip chain. On no a wax. On a wax dip yeah. chain. Holy chain. crap! Yeah. <coughs> it's crazy. It lasts a really long time. Some... I was going to say how long I got off of my last wax, but I don't want people to know because Sam declared it was only a thousand miles. Mm. <laughs> but he did five or something. <laughs> he just did it. He did the entire season. <laughs> yeah. Till, till no, I just bike. I just started doing it in like September. Yeah. And uh, I've waxed it once since then. Like even if it's rainy or something, and you like go yeah, you're like, fine, dude. Wax is it is uh, hydrophobic. It's scared hydro- of water. You're hydrophobic. It's no. scared of water. <laughs> well, it just doesn't smell. attract water. Like, no, give it away. Give it away. No, it's just it repels it. Yeah. it's just like oil. Yeah, yeah. it's it's awesome. Mm. Except I do the first time on the chain, you get little. It looks like a candle dripped all over your yeah. seat stay, or and all over the cassette stay. too. No, it's not too bad in the cassette. It's just on the chain stay. Uh-huh. I got. I have some flakes dropping down. I got flakes. You sure it's not dandruff? Yeah, I got flakes. Me, I'm the guy who always has a hat, has a cup full of sneer. What the fuck? That was terrible, Pat. (laughs) (laughs) Who made this? I do have a cup full of sneer. I'm a a negative pissant. A cup full of cheer. 
No, sneer. Yeah, I wouldn't be cheer. Do you hear how many times uh, I say I hate that yeah. when that happens? Yeah. A half empty cup of cheer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> and you know what? My New Year's resolution is, and I might still do it. I honestly think I should just cut wine out of my diet entirely. Mm. That's the just get rid of one alcohol. Worst idea. The problem is, yeah. you're on every one. That's why what? I don't get into. <laughs> that's why I don't get into I, wine. Give I me would all love of it. them. Yeah. yeah, but the problem is, then I'd be on to every but alcohol. I'm not. I'm not drinking good wine. Uh, oh, maybe uh, just. Make I mean, it, yeah, what? that's easy I, to cancel then. I have a Boda box of Chardonnay in my fridge right now. Do you cook with it? No, I drink that. What? Maybe if yeah. you just what? buy things that are worth drinking, then you'll buy less. Yeah, because it's, it's like, expensive. It's well, expensive. I buy things that are worth drinking, and you assholes drink it all. Uh-huh. And so all that's left for me is the rat piss. That's a good point. We do drink a lot of your alcohol. You do. <laughs> oh, hey, look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, I'm not empty. complaining. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I'm good uh, with it. I, I, I might give up wine. That's just, a good yeah. Just throw it Yeah, out. if it's just, a box wine, it's I not, haven't. It's not worth it. Well, what, what can Michelle give up calories. wine? No, Michelle, that is Michelle's that's what she a, drinks. She drinks, problem. but she drinks red. But it's going to be in the house then. I won't drink red. Oh, okay. I don't drink red anymore. It gives me sinus the sulfite issues. And stuff. Yeah, mm. Paul's the histamines. Yeah, it's the histamines. Yeah, it's something like that because I will wake up in the morning and it's like I have got a truck on my face. It's mm. the nose is so I can't mm-hmm. do it anymore. Mm. Some people yeah. have that with hops. Oh, those poor bastards. Poor souls. Oh, yeah, my I God. I mean, the heavy triple hop IPA stuff. Oh, sure. Digest some problems and also wow. congestion. And that. Mm. So I, I, I stopped drinking red wine about almost two years ago. And uh, I did have some at Christmas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was funny. My wife and I are out on a walk the next day, and I'm going, God, my sinuses are just packed. I don't know what's going on. She's, she didn't say anything. And then at one point in the walk, I said, I got it. It's because of the red wine. And she looked mm. at me. She's, damn it. I wanted you to drink red wine with me. <laughs> I love her. She's the best. <laughs> she is the best. <laughs> she was seriously mad. She wasn't saying anything because she just she's wanted like, me. maybe we can get away with this. Yeah. 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 Pat will finally drink red wine with me. And so yeah. there we go. It didn't work. So how was everybody's New Year? It's good. good. Jackson yeah. nodded. Okay. Yeah, no, it was good. I yeah. uh, wasn't too busy, you know, just kind of hung around and celebrated the New Year with the brothers-in-law and in-laws and yeah, it was fun does anybody go to new year's parties anymore mm-hmm. well i mean family that's I not a new year's party that's just like getting together and falling asleep four party. of us Ooh, rager yeah. show yourself <laughs> <laughs> hello yeah, that's a party yeah, yeah that's yeah. a party yeah uh yeah no definitely wouldn't go to like a big event really anymore. no i don't i mean i don't want to stay up that late anyway like the great thing about what we did was we were able to just watch the fireworks and a laser show thing in Seattle, the drone show, and then pass out. So you made it to midnight. Yeah, but we're in the condo because her condo overlooks. Oh, so then we were just able to, yeah, out. Hmm. Paul, did you do anything? No, you well, were home alone. Yes, we I was worried. home alone both Christmas and and New Year's. Oh, yeah, exciting. Yeah, so yeah, my my unfortunately my father in law is not doing so well. So yeah. my wife's been taking care of him or helping taking care of him. So. Yeah, so then you popped up. I looked, and you had a um, delirium. Yeah, and I'm like, and and then you served it up in a in a Revol glass. I did, and so I thought, well, I'm just going to mimic well, him. I've learned from you that I have to pour it in a proper glass. It yeah. might not be the right brand of glass. Yeah, that would have been better in a Bernadus glass. It it should be for that for deliriums that have each. Each brewery has their own glass. Oh my god! So it it is kind of a tulip shape, and it's got a trunk for a stem. Okay, because of the elephant. So, I I would like to collect. Yeah, all all the the Belgian beers that I I drink. But <clears throat> anyway, I thought I had a Saint Bernardus glass, but I don't anymore. The Duval, the Duval one. No, the Saint Bernardus. No, but Duval has one oh. that's kind of tulip, and they actually have a niche on the bottom of the. Like a little nick in the bottom of the glass wow. that helps create it, the, it, it, the those things. When you pour, the carbonation is. Oh wow! Yeah, there's a certain way to pour wow. that. So, hmm. David, were you with your brother? No, he was in Seattle. My, oh, my! <clears throat> I wanted to stay home and do nothing, but uh, my sister, who's my neighbor, had a little bit of a get together. But New Year's Eve was my last weekend shift. Oh. For the rest of, I keep saying this, and people think it's a joke for the <laughs> yeah, rest of the that's year. That's a lie. But I'm, I'm, I mean, like. 
There's no more weekends for me. For 2024. For 2024 and the foreseeable Hopefully future because the, the job I took future, yeah. next year is like no, it's like a normal, no wow. weekends, no holidays, no oh. nights. So, so you, he's going to have you, a you regular life. I've, uh, I'm on the downhill. Yeah, I've, I'm, I've, I've crested the... The, uh, the summit the terrible stuff here and then yeah so i hope wow. that that actually stays true for you because you also said you weren't gonna have any more nights and then you got okay well i was on emergent call and there's no more emergent calls so. <laughs> you also said you're gonna win the beer mile yeah i did and you didn't yeah well you're next a lot year. of talk next year yep. yeah next year oh, i no. am not doing that again this is a yearly thing no <laughs> <laughs> no, you. um i made it to about 1205 Nice. Uh, my wife and I, it was just the two of us. It was literally, it was honestly it's a party. the two of us. And um, I, we had hors d'oeuvres. We had dinner. But my wife, I, apparently, I am good for two things, food and alcohol. Because um, all my Christmas gifts were food related or alcohol related. Like, mm-hmm. I, she, I think my wife wants me to make her bread and drinks. Mm. Because that's what I got. And so on the bread maker, I made a focaccia dough. And mm. we had a homemade focaccia with dippings and olive oil and stuff like that. And then for dinner, we had crab. Uh, Dungeness crab, for those of you who live elsewhere. Okay. And um, a little flank steak, round flank steak wrap. And it was it was delicious. And then, um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I hope no students are listening. Had a, had a little part of an edible, and I... I I don't remember a whole lot else. <laughs> I'm not very good at that stuff. I'm not very good at that stuff. Yeah, and it was it was. It was yeah, it was. you got to pick something to cut out. You know, you <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm saying. You do all of it. <laughs> Bring it. I'll ingest it <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy it. Yeah, I, you know, if he can remember it. Yeah. yeah. What do they say? A little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. everything yeah. in moderation. Right. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah. Wrong. Okay. yeah. Enjoy of everything, master of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did anybody exercise the first day of the year? Mm-mm. Does a, a walk count? Nope. Pretty damn quiet room. I'm pretty oh. sure I did. That would, uh, pretty that sure would have been yesterday. Did. Oh, yesterday? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did like an hour and a half or an hour and 15. Or On something. the bike? Yeah, I've been doing the, the trainer road. Mm-hmm. Been uh, It's still got me at five days a week. Can't figure the app out to change it so well i've just been doing five days a week you kill me. <laughs> it says to so i'll do it it's so hard so the so sunday when i was working and then or christmas one day during these holidays i missed the workout and it just you feel terrible about yourself <laughs> i felt horrible for missing one of them and, and like and the calendar makes it like red yeah you like missed it fail that's when it's just like turns it like it kind of disappears into the background you can still see it lingering oh. there it's oh like, and you're like look at yeah look at what you didn't do you don't get the yellow yeah. on the graph Ugh. yeah so Train road. i just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. um you guys uh, didn't you guys no, didn't? no i, I did new year's eve. i was in seattle i did new year's eve but that's my first ride since the 16th hmm. and i didn't fare so well i was pretty tired and, really and then that's why i didn't do yesterday but I did 40 minutes today. Nice. Did you? Mm-hmm. What? What's your Ooh. FTB? I have no idea. I thought you got a That's power personal power trainer. Yeah, I do. But I just, I ride like I normally, because I do uh, Ruby. And yeah, but like, it has I to did, rattle off some kind of number. Well, I, look, I don't look at watts. It's watts per kilogram. And I try and not go below 2.5. And then, you know, I punch over these hills. I do like five. Six, I, I gotta know. Climb. I gotta figure this I th- out. I think it's like you're gonna. I think test. they calculate when I did a test. It was like two forty four, two forty. Damn, that's so low. Nice. That's bullshit. No, I he's don't, so uh, arrow. I believe it. Uh, he is that, like that is crap. It's. I honestly don't think it is. Like he is. This dude, there's everything about him is aerodynamic, and then you see him on <laughs> the got bike, a head. and he's like, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Jack, do you know yours? Yeah, I know mine. You're not going to say it out loud, though? It's a secret? Well, it's... I mean, I think I said it a couple of weeks ago. You're in the threes? No. You're not in the threes? Huh. I'm about 40 off. Yeah. Yeah. We weigh weigh the same. I think he might be less. I'm 165. He has, like... uh, You're, like, probably 40 pounds less than him. 30 pounds less than him, at least. I'm 165. Hey, hey, hey. I'm I'm sitting right here. (laughs) 
Yeah. He's yeah. like you're 40 what? pounds less than 165 me. pounds. Oh shit. Yeah. But oh. the thing is where my my F- I know though that my FTP is 50 fucking pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't need as much to yeah. power themselves. And I know that my FTP is not the place that I focus on. I focus on yeah. the other yeah. numbers which and are It just honestly better. doesn't matter. Like yeah. it's there's so many times that I I've, I've thought about this recently where it's just like it doesn't roll over. It matters when it's all you've got, Sam. <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day, though. It's the last thing you've held on to yes. is that 300 watt, and now it's no, dipped below. No, I was 320 for a while. Right now, I'm I'm uh, my. It says I'm 298, yeah. but but to ride it 298 is too easy. Huh. What were you gonna say? I was Sorry. gonna say I was thinking about this the other day though, because I was talking about training plans just in my head. So really, I was having a full conversation with myself. Uh huh. That's um, nice. No but I was thinking about imagine if you like did a little bit of weight work. And imagine Are you talking like belly weight work. No, I'm talking no, like lifting weight work. Like getting in the gym and stuff. You you blow everybody mm-hmm. sprint wise out of the water. Mm-hmm. I would. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, just draft. swear a hundred percent. Yeah, I was like like Especially like plyometrics, like gym work and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, don't worry about losing weight. Just get stronger. Mm-hmm. That's what I've been doing. Okay. Yeah. Always okay. Actually, okay. I'm gonna yeah. continue on. I'm gonna continue on that trend because I was looking at just. Were you talking to optimize, about me though, right? Yes. Okay. I was trying to optimize like <laughs> what you know for some of these events that I have planned for this year. Like, what is a good power to weight? I've always thought yeah. like, man, four watts per kilo is pretty killer, right? Like that <sighs> would be pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. But so I was doing math on like, hey, well, if I think 320 is a very reasonable number for me to be at. Uh, like, and I weigh 185. I'm just, I weigh 195. So yeah. if I weighed 185, that it was such a tiny difference. Like for me, just saying my watts per kg or my, uh, watts right now, yeah. 320 at 195. If I bump down 10 pounds, that's a lot of weight to lose. Doesn't actually make your watts per kg go up that much. What? No. So you're telling me everything I've been striving for, for like the last seven years yeah. is bullshit. Focus on power. No, nope. especially around Disagree. here. Disagree. It yeah. all based on. I, I heard this this guy who was getting a degree at Manchester uh, University of Manchester or something, and, and he was on a podcast, and he said, you know, "The most important thing is speed. It doesn't matter how many watts you put out. It's your CDA mm. and the speed that you put. There's guys that are going to beat you at, you know, at 250 watts." Um, but their CDA is so good, you could be cranking out 500 and you're dragging because you're up. CDA? Uh, that's coefficient drag. Okay. So you know, your body portaling. position makes makes up, Same some bit. people say, from 80 to 95% of, of the but drag. But a lot of so. those studies are triathletes. They're not like, because in a group, he could disappear. <clears throat> he's, you a, know? he's a track. This particular guy was a track uh, coach. If, but the, rate, I mean, that's still and, like and individual most on, of the yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah. Sam, the so, only place I ever disappear is emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll throw a, a name out that only only you would know, Leonard Nitz. Yeah, yeah. So the big push when we when we were in it was all about your VO2 max. That was the number that everybody wanted yeah. to push. Yep. And it's very important. And watts is important. And all this is important. But one thing that everybody forgets about is that. All those don't matter if you don't have the speed. If you mm-hmm. get there for however reason, whether it's your CDA or because of your watts or whatever, Leonard Nitz had one of the lowest in the professional cycling VO2 max. I think he was in the 50s. No shit. And wow. he was a monster. Yeah, oh, yeah. But not so much on hills and long climbs. But he had the record there for a while with the fastest crit lap for a kilometer crit. And it was here in Spokane here. or downtown. Yeah. It was 40 miles an hour. He did a lap at 40 miles an hour. And that's a by one, himself. two, three, four, five, six, six, six. One, two, three, four. Is an L shape. Six, yeah, yeah six, six turns. Six crit. corner. Crit. And he still managed for it. And, like, I mean, that is. God, that is. And that's on old gear, mm-hmm. yeah. people. That's and they scary. were. they yeah. Like, I was listening to uh, something else on the way home yesterday, and I was. They were talking about CDA and about how important it is and and what's mm-hmm. what was fascinating in my world is 
if you're in a position that is is uncomfortable and you have to get up and move out of it frequently you're actually like it takes you a while to build up those like aerodynamics around you you can't just like pop down into it and when you know like all of the wind you're scooting through so you build that up the longer that you're in that position and so you know this is more pertinent to a triathlete but like if they can hold a position as opposed to having to get up settle mm-hmm. back down get up settle back down so no i i totally agree with you uh with aerodynamics but there is definitely a balance between like a powerful comfortable position and absolutely you know if you can't sustain it then what good is yeah, it you're not if you're constantly to. out of it yeah I'm All gaining right. back control of the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Paul and I had a wonderful last show of 2023. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were both able to make known our objectives. And uh, through a little text change about <laughs> two days ago, uh, <laughs> Sam was just, you were the bully of the group. I'm just going to say it. And um, so in order to appease... Sam, um, I'm going to allow you guys to talk to me about, well, Paul, if you have any more, you you can throw them out. I think I threw out everything I need to throw there. But uh, your goals of 2024, I I, I hate goals. Intentions. Dad, if you're listening, turn down your, (laughs) because my dad, he he was just like, we listen. I think I've told you guys, we listen to all these motivational Mm -hmm. tapes. Goals, 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 write down your goals. Put it in a piece of paper and put it in your sock drawer. Ah, objectives. What are your objectives? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What, for a chance to maybe resolve your daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I have them too. Um, but what are your objectives for 2024? You can be as specific or general as you want. Uh, should we, Jackson, do or, or David? Should we start? We're starting at one end of the bar. Um, do you have any? Sure. Uh, I think. I mean, I guess I just want to always be like more physically fit than I was last year. I mean, I always, every single year, I will say that with the amount of exercise that I put in, I feel like there's a there's a bar that is relatively high that I hold myself to. But I think just adding on to what I had last year, not getting in a crash, all that type of stuff is a big, <laughs> you know, is a big, big want for this year. Um, but I want to race and I want to have fun with it this year. I yeah, think yeah. I pressurized some things a little bit. So I, I think those Did are where... You? Uh, was there a, uh, an expectation you set on yourself or, or did you feel it was set on you externally? No, I feel like it was probably set on myself. Okay. Um, and that's what I do, though. That's how I think I achieve some things is I hold myself to a high standard. And if I don't do it, then I'll just feel bad for myself and go back again the next time. So they're a little general. They're yeah. not, not necessarily so specific. Right. I. Okay have a tough time with believing in really specific ones because i think that if you set yourself such a specific one then and then you don't achieve that at the end of the year you'll look back and think was it really a quality year if i didn't achieve that super specific thing that i set up for myself so i think broad ones are really good for me yeah okay Mm -hmm. sam a I, 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 little birdie flew onto my shoulder this morning went, oh, Sam would like to tell you his goals and he'd like to be very specific. <laughs> because if you aren't specific, you're a little bitch. <laughs> and I flicked that birdie off. He <laughs> landed on the ground and I stepped on it. <laughs> oh. What are your objectives, Sam? Yeah, I thought about I'm it. i mute you. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> so I have thought like, I think specific goals for me this year. I really liked what I did last year. I was very well rounded. Yeah. Um, I think it's funny that I, you know, at some point was like, I'm going to try to go for 5,000 miles. I hit 4,972. Oh. On Strava. It doesn't count like the various other different things, but it doesn't really matter. Sorry to interrupt. Strava. Do you guys post that shit? What? The Strava totals? No. No. Okay, good. I like yeah. to look at it, but I don't post it. Okay, good. Anyway, yeah, continue. Um, but yeah, so keep up with that for this next year be well rounded with it but i think specifically i'd like to be somewhere between 185 190 but feeling healthy you know whatever that may end up as body composition wise uh and be somewhere around 320 watts for my ftp so that would bring me pretty close to four watts per kilo but not quite um and then oh yeah no, that's interesting that that you guys are starting to name objectives that aren't 
event specific that aren't uh, anything like that. They're more internalized. Mm -hmm. And and that's really interesting. Yeah. I think that like, you know, those are something that, and I don't have full control over them. Like you could narrow that down into, I want to focus on being able to ride, you know, three rides a week, whatever. But those are good, like objective measurements for me that I could be going for. Um, but yeah, then the one thing that I did that I texted you guys all about on New Year's Eve, which only takes me a couple of drinks to do a bad decision, was sign up for the Tour de Bloom. Um, Drink? Um, did you really? Yeah, the pro. <laughs> oh, mommy, yeah. dude! I will do whatever I can to help you on. That. Uh, so here's well, not right, but y- I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I have 16 weeks before okay. I'm in a total line for that, right? And here's the thought. I, I mean, I'm no Dave pressure from anybody, yeah, but gonna see if I can do it. There, it, so it's it, the one that I'm signed up for fifth, is yeah. So it's a Thursday, weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's four days, five stages. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. Right? Nothing like yeah. that has happened since I did Cascade Cycling Not Classic. Happened for a long time. Yeah, that's really cool. So I was like, yeah. I want to be a part of that. Right? Northwesterners. Listen, yep. get involved. These races, you keep complaining about races not happening. I know. And this These one, guys like, are it putting was, their they're like 350 or something like that for yeah. that many stages that's rad they'll help you out with housing all of mm-hmm. it wow so that's cool but there is also what i did find out the next day is that there is a two three race also oh that yeah. is yeah <laughs> that is just friday saturday sunday and that's four stages instead of five so like if you ended up wanting to do it i do that one yeah like i i would even consider changing my category to do that because like what do I have to do besides get my teeth knocked in? I mean, there's already teams signed up for. I mean, the, you're, you're less likely to donate your entry fee if you do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> but like, you know, so I'd be if if somebody wanted to do that with me, it'd be more like Montana then I think. Yeah. Um, but I am going to do Tour de Bloom, Hell or High Water, Good um, and then Afreda is my other commitment, and RC three is my commitment. So those three are my like Afreda. those are my races. Yeah, that's on a holy day. It's it the is. day after no, the holy isn't. day. No, it isn't. What is it? What's it's on seventh? Sunday. I know. Sunday is Perry Roubaix. Perry Roubaix is always Saturday. on a Sunday. What the? Yeah. I think you meant you can East. watch this. You can watch a women's race on Saturday. I you, oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you meant Easter. Good. I was about to be like, "What's a big what, deal? What's Easter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's Easter? <Yeah. laughs> oh man, Perry Roubaix. Kid <laughs> grew up Catholic. Yeah, I know, right? What's on Easter? Yeah. It's a big deal. Easter. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, then my other goals, I, I, I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. This is why I'm taking the longest on it is <laughs> I, I tell. am going to do the Wednesday night series and I think my wife is going to do them with me. Not nice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yep. I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do most of those. I'll believe it. Um, I'll and then most of, and by most of, I mean like I might miss one or two yeah, of yeah. the Thursday nights and still do that Thursday night thing that I was doing. Have, have oh. has Badlands posted? They have not yet. They said it would happen in January. Or By the February. way, Badlands is the name of a local club who yep. puts on our training series. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Thursdays. and then Back Wednesdays. Thursday, so yeah, so Thursdays. Wednesdays is the mountain bike series put on. Oh, yep. And then um, in Riverside, and then Thursday would be that. Yeah. So like, I think I could then come into RC three in really good form. You know, I regret uh, not doing that series last year, the Wednesday night series. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it's great friends of mine who put it on. But second of all, uh, it I. I just even going out there and beating the shit out of yourself really helps with speed. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. it also helped immensely with my bike handling. I would go into a crit and pump, people are bumping wheels and you're like, oh, everybody, uh, roadies are so funny too. It's just like, yeah, if, well, you, if you hear this, you know, this, oh, 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 what the fuck? Ah, ah. I like can going, confirm just, that they do. Just, yeah. just yeah. relax. Relax your body. Okay. Move your bike back a little bit. Move yeah. the hips. It's the hips. You know, and and just chill, man. And and so it helped me immensely. So it's yeah, I've always had better. And then like also, I mean, if we're gonna then translate that over into road, those mm-hmm. quick explosive, t- you know, sure. that's great to yeah. get that for mountain biking. So, so I just got to work on sprinting. Jackson told me that. Mm-hmm. David, what are you gonna do in twenty twenty four besides not work nights, <laughs> not work nights, not work weekends? Except I have a lot of Fridays, which makes that kind of stuff hard. Yeah. Um. My, I just want to, I just want to race all of the three past three years away. I want to race away. Yeah, I already have like so. I, I signed up for uh, my first race will be actually probably Tri Cities, and then um, 
that there's a Grand Fondo down there, part of the Euphrates series, and then Whiskey 50 down in Prescott, Arizona. I'm doing a 50 mile mountain bike race. I signed Ooh. up for that. Yep. And then I would like to do Euphrates. I, I mean, I just want to do as many races as possible in mountain, in road, in cross in the fall. I have three months off this winter or this summer before or between like graduating residency and starting work. And so I just want to race like. I just want to ride and race as like much as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. I don't care Damn. about winning. I just want to go year. to a bunch of races. Yep. I want to go back to Montana. I want to go. Yep. Like I want to do a tour of Bloom. We'll figure that Friday out. We'll have to see. Trade with somebody. Yep. RC3. It would be fun. I, I would definitely. Do. like. And then you'd also have more of the local guys, too, if we did the 2-3. I just signed up for the big one because I was like, I haven't done a four-day stage race in a long time. You d- and you I did think about it. Montana in that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, like, you signed up for it because you're Sam. That's what you, you do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just signed yeah, up. Yeah, signed up, donate yeah. it. Damn. It's tax write-off. Sign away money. That's what Sam stands for. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell Sign my, away money. Don't yep. tell my wife that. She will never <laughs> let that go. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she listens. Yeah, she probably is walking through Costco right now, and she's like going to text me. Mm. Hey, let's check out some uh, of the recent headlines in the cycling world. Same thing brought to us by our friends at Untapped Maple. Pure fuel provided by Vermont's finest maple syrup. Truly brilliant. Their slopeside regular syrup, by the way, also truly worthy of checking out. The use the link on our website. I uh, we we got it. We get a food box delivered, and they had slope style syrup little packets in it and i was like going hey i know those guys it's delicious cool. it's really good um uh, first story I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring it down for a second there aren't any uh, any jokes for this one according to reports from multiple australian media outlets uh recently retired pro cyclist uh rowan dennis has been charged in connection with the death of his wife melissa melissa sorry dennis hot hoskins herself a former pro um She's reportedly hit by a driver in Adelaide, Australia, on the night of December 30th, died from her injuries in the hospital the following morning. Rowan Dennis is accused of having uh, of having hit her with a ute, also known as a pickup truck, in other parts of the world. According to the Australian Broadcasting Comp- Corporation, Dennis was charged with uh, c- causing death by dangerous driving, driving without due care and endangering life, and he's been released on bail and is expected to face court in March. Uh, Melissa, who's 32, was successful on both the road and track, world champion in teams of pursuit, uh, multiple-time Olympian and winner of the Tour of Xiongming Island in 2012. She retired at the end of 2017, marrying Rohan the following year. The couple has two children. There's no way we're going to speculate on anything. The Internet is rampant with things, people accusing, yelling, screaming. Um, all I can say is our hearts go out to everyone involved and uh, to raise your glasses to the loss of the loss of a great cyclist. I... I, I yeah, I wish there was a you know there's a better way to transition from that. So um, this one I'm going to go from uh, super serious to uh, we can throw some humor now on this one. The uh, Lugi scene round the world, everybody. Uh, the UCI mm. commissaires oh, yeah. have a fined Matthew Vanderpool 250 Swiss francs after spitting in a group of booing spectators during the UCI Soccer Cross World Cup in Hulst on Saturday. World Championship stated uh, the World Champion, sorry, stated following the race that his actions were in response to the behavior of a group of spectators toward him during the race. "Quote: Even during the warm-up, I've had enough of those boos." Thank you, Paul. Mm-hmm. He said uh, the Dutchman was asked if he would regret his actions, and he replied, "After a while, it's enough, even for me." Uh, Vanderpool was on the third lap and pulled out a winning margin before relaxing the last lap of the World Cup. While taking his last lap applause, he was pictured spitting in a group of spectators who he claims has been booing him all afternoon. Um, first off, I do want to say that, I, I mean, this is completely unsubstantiated too, but I had heard rumors that it was more than just booing. It was throwing beer, and there have been tales that it might have been even a little bit of a cup of urine. Mm. Um, and I completely unsubstantiated that, 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 that those aren't facts. Mm-hmm. Those are just, the you know... I'm just filling the rumor cup. Um, thoughts on that one, first of all, from anybody who would like to jump into this. Um, I think that if all that stuff's <laughs> going on, I still don't think you spit. 
I don't. I also don't know what it is about Europeans and spitting on other people. They do it like professional athletes. You see European professional athletes spit on each other like when they're angry all the time. I don't know where that came from, but that is really gross. But I also think that. <laughs> <laughs> just went through a pandemic. That is really gross. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> like, hey, we're all sick. You see a bunch of soccer players, like when they get pissed yeah. at each other, they just like spit at each other. It's like, why is that your first? Th- like, so gross. hit him. Like, hit yeah. him in the face. <laughs> Don't spit on him. That's super gross. Or do like Zidane. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But agree, like, yeah. I don't really. First of all, I don't get the spitting. But second of all, I think that. You got to think a little bit, Matthew. I think you got to think where you are and how what jersey you're wearing right now. And no mm-hmm. matter how awful it is, if it's that awful, stop the race in protest. Say, I am not racing because these people showed up. But when you're doing that, when you spit at people and there's little Johnny watching on TV, little Johnny's going to go out on his bike and spit at his friends now. So it's Well, like maybe I, Johnny's friends deserve it. Nobody deserves to be spat on. That's... I can think of some people from my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> of course you do. Back yeah. to your dad. <laughs> yeah. Not my dad. <laughs> Not my dad at all. I, I think that the situation. I think that the situation is funny to be laughed at because it's like he really just actually spat at somebody. But it's also like video's great. Yeah, but it's like now you got to think. I know you're in the heat of the moment, but you just got to take a second and be like, if I spit, what is this going to send a message for? So we're all talking about this constant demand upon the athletes themselves. Shouldn't there be a spectator code of conduct? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like, I just, I think that it's it's not uncommon that there's so many just tomfoolery that happens at what are you, bike 80? races. Tomfoolery. Yeah, exactly. I know, right? <laughs> None of the malarkey. Yeah. And it's just like, it's one of those pieces where it's like the cyclists are forced to, you know, behave in a professional manner, but they're being treated poorly. Horribly. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, and you see it in the tour. You know, it's like oh. when Chris Froome had urine thrown on him. It's yeah. like, God, that, that spectator deserves to be knocked out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, I would, if Chris Froome hopped off his bike and just knocked the living daylights out of somebody, I'd be like, you had it coming. Justifiable. Yeah. Yeah. I think... Fans, as a general rule, doesn't matter if it's American football. Even uh, I'm sure most of us have seen the um, David Beck- Beckham, mm-hmm. you know, on Netflix uh, documentary. I the people it. are telling, screaming at him, saying, yeah. "I hope your yeah. kids die of cancer." What? Yeah. So I mean, it, it's um, fandom is it can get out of control. Tafosi's done things. Yeah. You know, people throw tax on the. That's just there's no way to control it. I think. Vanderpool has shown that I think he has a problem with restraint. He cracks like choking a little girl. He didn't choke her. He had his arm, hands around her neck. Wait, really? What? Yes. What I didn't know that. He, he said, knock it off. So that's what I remember. <laughs> I, might I might be thing? wrong. I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was going to make a joke about he should just stick to chasing girls around hotel rooms. Yeah. But, but I think he phys- that was a problem. Too that he physically yeah, touched soon. her. Mm-hmm. Maybe it wasn't around the neck or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, th- there's ways to deal with it, and I don't think it's I- – I think it's crappy that these guys were, were – if they were throwing urine, that's inexcusable. If it was beer, I'm, I'd say, God, I'm getting next to these guys. Just splash me. It's like a blessing. Put my glass out yeah, in front. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Maybe Open my mouth, you. you know. Yeah. But, yeah, he made a – if did you guys see the footage? Mm-hmm. I actually watched the race. He actually made an effort to get off his line and spit and then go yeah. back out. Yeah. I don't know if that really helps. I, I'm kind of with Jackson. You know, whether you pull out then or go to make a statement on the podium saying, you know, I'm glad to be at my, you know, one of the few cross races in, in the Netherlands of my home country. But it's unfortunate a few people have ruined that. I mean, that's how you disgrace yeah. them. You yeah. Know? Uh, or, not spitting. Now you've just even the playing field. You both. That's not the. Way and this is so easy for us oh, as, yeah, exactly. as armchair spectators to be able to say we shouldn't do that. But in the heat of the moment, where you're pumped full of adrenaline, and you're just like, "Oh, these guys have been calling my, you know, wishing my kids get cancer yeah, or, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Absolutely horrible things." I want them to no longer exist, you know. Uh, and, yeah. and you know, and I'm not saying kill people. Yeah. Don't don't think that. But but I would like them to just poof. Like I want um, Thanos to snap his fingers, <laughs> right? Go away, yeah. right? Yeah, and I I I hundred percent agree. I think that what they were doing is inexcusable. 
but it's just one of those things where you signed up for the cross race. You knew that there were going to be fans there. They don't have really that many restrictions on what they do. It's just this That's is part of the culture. Yeah. There too. Booing is this one beer. thing. Booing, I'm fine with Well, booing. he made another yeah, statement. He says, if you're going to have more than two beers, stay home. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like that, you know, cross races over there, it, it's a party. They have yeah. like, like, you know, beer techno music everywhere. and everything. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. You yeah. Know, it is a festival. And yeah, you're going to get people out of hand. And, and it's unfortunate. I'm on my I second think, beer. Oh, I am home. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Boo. Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you get cancer. Just, yeah. God, it's just crazy. Yeah, no, it, I don't it's think just, you can have people um I don't think you can hold people to a like a professionalism standard if you're not going to back them up. So whoever's yeah. hosting the race, you know, you can't expect people to act professionally if there's nobody there to have their back. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you have to have an organization that's backing you up. Because you have to swallow your pride in the moment and say, this isn't my problem. Somebody else will deal with it. But he's probably like, you know, trying to stick up for himself when nobody else would. Yeah. And well, I mean, Lance got boatloads of it, you know, mm-hmm. in his day. And, and you watch that uh, up to who has time trial. I can't remember what year it was. But um, the my concern for him, because, you know, I was still a gigantic supporter. It was before all that stuff happened. And and to watch him going up Lap Duez in a time trial with open roads, I was like, somebody's gonna reach out and just knock him in the head and he's gonna be on his ass. You know, just and watching those races, the Tour de France, you know, you've got the gendarmes in certain areas who are doing their jobs and they're being quite bullies. They're shoving people out of the way. But you're on a, on a switchback in the middle of the Alps and you've got hundreds of drunk assholes all around you. Um and it's it, the beautiful thing about the sport that we all love is the accessibility. The mm-hmm. the fact that you can stand on the side of a road and they can come by you at 30 plus miles an hour and and you're like, oh my God, they were right there. That the rider was foot away. right mm-hmm. there. You have to have a code of ethics where you can boo. I'm okay with booing. Mm-hmm. But if, if you're spitting, if you're throwing beer, if you're throwing anything like that, you pass the phase. You, I mean, there needs to be some sort of accountability where a spectator who's being an absolute douchebag doesn't get to play anymore. So, mm-hmm. but, but if you do that, now you're all of a sudden charging for entry. Well, and, see, and, cross and, races over there, you do. You oh. pay for entry. Then kick that fucker out. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's where the mob has to take over. Yeah, you know, you need to the say, people hey, next listen, to him going. Yeah. You're being a prick, man. Yeah. Get the riders shouldn't have to deal with it. Yeah, unfortunately, in my opinion, Vanderpool had felt like he had to do something. Yeah, uh, and no rider should ever feel that way. No, uh, I, I know I'd be pissed if I had urine if I smelt like urine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, anybody ever done something in a race they regret? Lashed out at a competitor. Mm-hmm. Lashed out at a spectator. Oh. I thought you meant like entering the A at Missoula. A's at Missoula. Yeah, that, yeah, I regret yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> I still won that one. <laughs> yeah, I lost my cool at Walla Walla one year. Yeah. Kind of, like the race had gotten canceled early because of a big crash. They paused everybody. I was the announcer people, that year. Yeah, some people were ditching yeah. off, and one person just cut right in front of me, and at 25 miles an hour, I went straight up over my bars. Because this guy just goes, and I got to get off so he could get back to the start line as quick as possible. And he just went without looking oh. and just took me out. And I got up just seeing black and just screaming at him and in front of all the spectators dropping all the words. And my GA just comes over and goes, cool, 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 cool. And I'm just like losing it. It's so unbelievable when the, uh, the energy and the mm-hmm. adrenaline kicks in. You, you see nothing but red. Yeah, 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 but I mean it's it's a race, right? Like you're that's this mindset that you're in it with the race, and so that's why it's yeah, it's understandable that you snap like that because these people are so focused and concentrated. I mean, I've never been a professional athlete like that. But like, God, that's unreal. Did you feel bad about it afterwards? No, I still think the guy's an asshole. Yeah, good, <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah, it was I think I got mode. in a screaming yeah. match in the middle of a crit in yeah. downtown Wenatchee. And I was dropping f bombs. Yeah, and I still don't feel bad about it. No, and he 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 felt bad. He was apologizing and all mm-hmm. that, but yeah, I was best. Yeah, look behind you. Anybody else done something they regret in a race? 
These two are saints. They've never done something wrong. Jackson Somebody clips them and they're Jackson like, I'm sorry I was in your way. No, I mean, I've I've had like yelling conversations where I've like kind of like shouted at other people. Um, but it's also that like game time mentality, you know, where you just you lock in and then some people start to kind of take turns a little bit wrong or they're not getting on the front when you flick them around and then you kind of have a little spat with them and then it's over. You've mastered passive aggressiveness on well, your bike. Oh, it's not even that. It's just like I've said like go. I was like someone's tur- like I flick the flick the elbow and nobody comes around and then I turn around and I say what's going on? And then they're like, "Oh, I'm dogging back here." It's like, "No. We're all in this." Like you start getting in that type of situation. He calls it out. Yeah, he's so much better than his father cuz yeah. I'm like, "Fuck your mother. Get up here." <laughs> Jesus. Make sure you get cancer. <laughs> oh, I will burn your house to the ground if you do not take a pull, you asshole. But in those type of situations, <laughs> I wish we raised at the same time. Like I want young, just like uh, you want. You want asshole. Pat. I want asshole Pat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I feel like those conversations, though, to be had, like, there's nothing wrong with them. Like I said, no. it's game time mentality. Sometimes that comes out. And yeah. afterwards, once the race is done, that, that version of you and that version of them is gone. Mm-hmm. It yeah. happened happened in the race. Oh, it's I done. hold grudges. Still burn their house to the ground. Yeah. yeah. Wow. With uh, pride. I don't know. At least that's where I go. <laughs> I just, Piss on the ashes. I just let it go. And, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I did. I was born and raised with Bernardino as my hero. So I, yeah, I thought that was, right. that's right. that was it. I you that are was it. inner asshole. I thought that was the max. rules. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was the rules, man. David, you've never done anything mean in a bike race in your entire life. I don't really care. I, th- I don't really care about the other people in the race. <laughs> <laughs> You're all dead to me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's like either going to work out that day, or you know, and you're going to be in a breakaway or not. And I don't know. I mean, I've I've been crashed out and been angry, but um, yeah, not not never like, lost your cool. No, I don't really. No, I don't think so. He's way too level headed. It's think, annoying. I'm trying to remember if I have. I you know I've made uh, one guy wasn't pulling through on this one race, and he says I got a teammate up. And I said. They've got two minutes on us. Yeah. You know. Just soft pedal there's, through, man. There's yeah. two guys yeah. up, and and one of them's your teammate. We're not going to catch him. We caught him. Oh, shit. I talked him in. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I felt bad. <laughs> so, you didn't look back at him and just like, uh, sucker. Oh, son of a gun. Yeah. We did See, catch I, him. I, I just <laughs> but he kept pulling even though they were in sight because they were out of sight. And then I'm like. All right, I'm not going to say, "Hey, dude, you're, that's your guy up there." And now you're chasing him down. <laughs> oh, well, he was done. Wow. Yeah. I'm thanks, Sam, for actually freaking out at a race because oh yeah, I was starting to feel like I'm the only guy who's ever lost his shit. No, I go zero to a hundred. Jackson, when you crashed and you didn't hop up and go like, "I'm going to kick somebody's ass." No, that's n- that. That's never my first response. Really? I think that I don't know, David. You might have been there in the moment, but I just remember being down and I was like I was worried about myself first and then I worried about the bike I didn't care about I knew nobody else had crashed so I didn't need to care about anybody else but I was just like I hit my head that's all I said that was the first thing I ever said really? after the crash I went ah mm-hmm. oh, damn I hit my head yeah and then I stood up and walked away and, and that was dumbassery that it even happened on an open crit that you could fit you know 40 people wide oh, on yeah but yeah. like or circuit but like also that was just a typical like stupid race incident yeah like where i would lose my my cool is if somebody's doing something dumb yeah i was pretty uh pretty livid when the when the guy ran us off the road a uh, year oh, yeah. ago but, oh yeah but that's, he was driving that's, that's, yeah. he was driving away i couldn't do anything he was i like to... chased him for a second but I can, you know he's in a car i was in my tap shoes so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a lost art, man. It is a lost art tapping. Yeah. Just ask Danny K. Um, Okay. Gregory Hines. Yeah, one of the last great ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Are we the only ones at the bar who know Gregory 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 Hines is? Yeah, I have no clue. Is that like Hines ketchup? No. Is that a movie star? Um, He and Billy Crystal did uh, Running Scared, Uh a cop movie. Have you guys seen that? Probably not. Son of a bitch. Uh, let's jump to tonight's fit tips with Sam brought to us by Ambassador Cycling. You got a new setup 
all ready to go, well, get ready. You can book some time to make sure you're always properly dialed in for the new season. Better now than tendonitis in the spring. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, am I right? Don't, li- oh, don't eyeball that shit. Tonight's question <laughs> focuses on crank length. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm seeing that there's a, a trend for shorter cranks out there. I read an article on it. It's like people are starting to think that shorter cranks are the cure. So is this is this encouraging spinning? Is this position flaws? Um, what would be the reason to go shorter? And do you recommend it? It's the same people arguing size doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> okay. Sorry, <laughs> I was gonna say it. Hot topic. <laughs> Hot topic. Here's yeah. the truth. <laughs> that so, is so great. <laughs> Uh, it's a great question. Uh, Phil Burt is kind of the pioneer of who brought this topic to the table um, because he's the bike fitter that did bike fits for Ineos or Sky for a long sure. time. He's a big guy in the UK, has several uh, books out. But his thing on shorter crank length is basically saying that you it's a you have more of a mechanical advantage if you're not as extended out in front of you you know so that three o'clock position sure um, that's like your weakest point right in the sense of like you, you're so far away if you bring that back underneath you more you're more powerful so okay like, I could see that yeah. yeah yeah and I I don't know I I do I I follow it. I, I, if somebody came in and they're, I'm a 175, for instance, let's just use me for example. If somebody came in there 175 and they're like, I'm thinking I want to go to 170, I'd be like, uh, well, okay, well, you should definitely do a bike fit on it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and probably it's going to be fine, but you do have to consider if, you know, that's a five millimeter swing. And so it's a really a one centimeter swing that's top and bottom. Big change. Big change. Yeah. And it's also front and back, right? So it yeah. does change the mechanics of the hip. We have to take all that into account. But like a two and a half, like if you want to just downsize one crank length, it's probably not going to make that big of a difference, I don't think. So I'm all on board with it. I saw this one guy, if you look him up on Instagram, if you type in like 100 millimeter cranks, have you seen, seen this guy? guy? Yeah. He's machined him himself. And he just, yeah, it just looks like he's just like tapping. We what's, represent what's a, a lollipop skill. Is a high RPM? The lollipop skill. Oh, he is? No, he's low RPM too. He's just like, I mean, he's, but it's, it's, I'm, it's got to be a joke. Yeah, I'm guessing it's, it's a be. bet. It's got. Oh, I mean, he has a whole yeah, Instagram yeah, yeah. page of him just riding with different bikes with hundred millimeter cranks. David, but, that's on Instagram. You should check it I out. I should check it out. I have a take on it. See what you think. Yeah. So, back in our day, yeah. Pat and I, uh, we ran. I mean, crits straight blocks. You had. We didn't have eleven cent. It was twelve eighteen. Yeah. And there's just one gear jumps. Mm-hmm. And then road racing, if Rarely did you have anything bigger than a twenty four? I ran a twenty three. Yeah, twenty three is yeah. probably standard. Yeah. So that it makes sense to have longer arms for forty two twenty three. And, and when by you're the going way. uphill, you know, the thing is is you're not gonna get RPMs out of that. You are already oh, cranked, yeah. so you, you extend that out. And I think that's where that theory came. Now guys are running eleven thirty threes with a thirty six front. If you're running long cranks on that, yeah. That that's seems counter yeah, you know, yeah. intuitive, but I think with the invention of of wider gears, you know, yeah. with twelve as opposed to we had six and seven, yeah, and the bigger spacing. I wonder if that's I don't know what you think if that makes more sense. I know track riders to go used to, to, use to use the shorter, shorter cranks, shorter with, cranks because you can spin and you, you, know, you, you get that smaller is, circles. You, you you're not gonna. You're totally right. Um, I mean, I would say that I would almost then go with the longer crank length on those easier gears because then it's you know you're basically moving a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are spinning faster, but you have less resistance through that whole mm-hmm. motion. Um, but yeah, it, it does really come down to like what what cadence do you like to spin at? Yeah. Uh, because I mean, there are some people that just really like to spin, and you see their power like somebody who is not as powerful. It's a great way to go, but if you're a mm-hmm. sprinter, do not go on to a shorter crank. I don't think. Go on to a longer crank. Yeah. But yeah, track yeah. is another interesting part because if you end up going on to a shorter crank for that, you can spin up faster. Mm-hmm. But then you're gonna spin out. What's everybody on? Jackson, what do you, do you know what you're on? You're probably one seventy five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, one seventy five. Seventy five. I'm on one seventy five. One seventy two fives. Two fives. It's oh, a height short. thing. Yeah. I sold a mountain yeah. bike. I sold a mountain bike. Was I, had one, I had one eighties over here earlier. I had one eighties on a mountain bike. Randy B used to 
to road ride crits with 180s. It's a you got to be yeah yeah. He was Travis crazy. too. Travis Coleman mm-hmm. 180s. Yeah. Cool. yeah, that's why that's why I could never beat him in a sprint. It was the yeah that was it. Yeah, that was <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, but it wasn't his huge size. 1500 watt <laughs> sprint. Yeah. If you look at it from like the the perspective of this is a lever arm though. Yeah. At some point, like take it to the extremes, make it a hundred millimeters or make it two hundred and fifty millimeters. At some point, you're going to go beyond what your body is yeah. able to do, um, because if you put your foot way out in front of you or way behind you, you're not going to have as much of the power that you need, or you're not going to get through your full range of motion. But um, at the same time, it's going to be very height specific for everybody. Mm-hmm. And in something like a road discipline, you want to find that sweet spot where your height matches the crank arm so that every pedal stroke you're getting as much out of it as possible. But in mountain biking, crit racing, cross racing, we're seeing shorter cranks because you can pedal through corners without pedal strikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the big push is that it's the pedal strikes in those alternative fields. But like is in the tour, are they going towards shorter crank? I think think it depends on the individual. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I I don't know if you saw, but but, uh, the cafe ride with, um, yeah, with Matt Stevens, uh, which he one, is the, shorter. The Tade or or O? Uh, yeah, it, it's with Pidcock. Uh, Pidcock. Yeah, I mean he's thinking of doing one six fives. He's running one seventies yeah. right now. I think but that's, what, like that's what two. brought the idea. Yeah. Too. But yeah. also yeah. Sky is fits. on that yeah. train because of Phil Burt. They've all been yeah. going shorter cranks for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like look at, at Chris Froome. He's on like one seventies. Yeah, technically it's huge. that's working. Yeah, yeah. Well, well same with Enios. It was. They really haven't yeah. been cranking out too much no. lately. They yeah. haven't been cranking out. <laughs> <laughs> See, she did there. Did. Technically, yeah. it's an aerodynamic advantage as well, having yeah. a little bit of that room removed. I mean, smaller circle. Yeah, because mm-hmm. today, today has uh, smaller cranks or shorter cranks as well. Really? Not probably for that reason, but probably just because it works for him. But Pidcock said that that was on his uh, on List. his time trial bike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, he, I, I think that's what cranks. brought the idea. I was I was watching Matt Stevens. With that, with that concept. Hey, didn't I, you interview him? Yeah. Uh, where, button, I and I think like the big part is thing. like yeah, in that top goes. dead center is. of the pedal stroke is what we would label it as in bike fitting. And that's just when you're fully flexed, yeah. hip flexion. It's you're not closing down the hip joint as much if you're on a shorter crank. Yeah. Again, I think it comes down to it's personal. So personal. It's, it's so, huge. Yeah, I mean because because I'm more limber. When I see people that are more limber, they have a tendency to be able to be more comfortable down low, and then yeah. they that that's not a problem. Yep, I've and always been low cadence too. I've always been like I feel comfortable at like sixty to seventy though. RPMs. Yeah, that's our you know, yeah. That's to me, just, that fits with a long crank arm. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but the the other piece, like the last one that I would touch on for this, is that. Like it's it is such an individual thing as like David was saying because the difference between David and I like how we are built is totally different. I have an insane mm-hmm. length in my tibias. It's just I was gonna say it's actually just your tibia. It's just my we tibia. We have the same torso. You just have and femur like probably six inches in your tibia. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I have all tibia, and so it's like I would actually benefit from shorter crank length because knee over pedal spindle having that in closer to me it would be way more advantageous if I went down to a 172.5 or a 170. And I do have 172.5 on. We'll never go to. Yeah. Never, never, never. Never. It's never. a principle. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it, 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 Same with my 50 tooth chain ring. Yeah, yeah it ain't broke. broke. Smaller. It ain't yeah. broke. So why fix it? Uh, moving on, ask to, Oh! Do it. Do it. I, bumper. Oh. Bumper, please. God. Sucks to be you, doesn't it, Sam? God. We forgot yours. Classic oh. doctor is getting everything. Yep. <laughs> even doing the work. Here it is. It was the curtain. Shh. So cool. <laughs> you ruined it by drinking the last year beer. Tonight's Ask Dr. David is dealing with the... Uh, the Paul's on fire with these. Well, I'm not going to lie. Let's pull the curtain back. Let's... Shh. Um, and, and say... I was like, who's got one tonight? And Paul's like, you want to ask about inflammation. The best way to deal with it for stage races. Um, I personally... Oh, shit. Just hey, that's my job. Bill Dan broke my beer <laughs> on the bar. That's a pack filler mug, too. Uh, you got another one. <laughs> Make more. Um, dealing and continuing on as David gets another beer. Um, about inflammation, the best way to deal... I use glucosamine chondroitin. Does anybody else... No? No. Is anybody else over, over the 50. age of 50? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. 
Um, <laughs> you know, I use it. I use it daily because I, I just to help my shoulders and things like that. Um, but um, he, he was asking about that. Does it help? How about natural inflammatories like cinnamon, which I mm. never knew. Cinnamon. cinnamon. I never knew that was an anti-inflammatory. Does anyone so, actually know how to spell that? Or not turmeric too. T u turmeric, 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 turmeric. It's like how people say February. It's February. Forever. David, answer this while I go clean the bar towel. Oh, okay. Well, so I'll start with glucosamine. Um, the it's a supplement you can buy what like Costco where do you buy yeah. yours? I, I don't I don't use oh, okay. any anti-inflammatories. Okay, probably yeah, grocery stores. Belgian beer. Costco, just something Belgian like that. beer for Paul. You, yeah. you can get it. At, yeah, just Belgian beer for yeah. anti It's the yeast. Uh, but it's a, so the idea is that glucose means part of cartilage, um, and then if you give your body building blocks, I suppose that it will help you rebuild your cartilage which is what's happening in most people over the age of 50 when they have osteoarthritis or painful joints uh, is that their cartilage is worn down um with most supplements these things have been um demonstrated in vitro meaning like in a lab in cells but not necessarily in humans uh con- the the glucosamine and chondritin compounds is it condor chondritin i, 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 I mumbled it because i was hoping you wouldn't <laughs> Chondritin. <laughs> You're making Chondritin. shit up now. Chondritin. No, no, you do this a lot. With the, oh, there's a lot of hard words in medicine. You just yeah. say them fast. Yeah, kind of yeah. Slur. yeah, that's why we write. I've the been way drinking. We write. Do you yeah. concur? <laughs> I concur, and that's why you write sloppy, is because I can't actually spell anything. Yeah, especially <laughs> a little with insight the into the world of dictation nowadays. Yeah. yeah. The curtain here. Um, so uh, the the thing is with uh, glucosamine though is that it hasn't panned out in any of the random randomized control trials where they give it to people and they give people a placebo and what they're monitoring is is um, symptoms and it doesn't it, like it's not a repeatable uh, effect that they're seeing some studies are like oh yeah people had a 20% reduction in their pain when they took it yeah. but then there's very repeatable evidence for placebo where they give everybody something and they tell them it's going to help and everybody has the same reduction in symptoms and so right now at least there's no good evidence that that's doing anything for joints uh but it's probably not harmful if you're buying it from a good source i've brought this up before in the past though most supplements you buy if you don't buy them from a reputable source may actually contain nothing at all or other things that could be harmful because nobody is nobody is regulating that the FDA does not regulate your glucosamine. Same with uh, like a cinnamon supplement, I suppose, if you took a supplement versus, get, versus getting it in your diet. Cinnamon is super interesting, too, because, again, in vitro or in cells, not in the body, they show that it affects the COX pathway, which is what ibuprofen does, another <coughs> anti-inflammatory. I'm just telling you how it's similar, okay? You said COX. But, yeah, well, it's C-O-X, okay? Oh, okay. It's spelled different. Well, I heard that some people <coughs> used to take ibuprofen before race thinking it would help. Didn't we do that one? I yes, think we, we did. Yeah, we yeah, talked about that right. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your face. It's called a callback. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> okay. Sorry. I was here for that. But again, in vitro, it might affect the Cox pathways as well as they think like, oh, it might help with um, like lowering your cholesterol, that sort of thing, because it affects one of the enzymes that we actually use things like statins for. Um, but in in the trials, it hasn't hand out i mean measuring inflammation is very difficult it's it's not just one thing there's multiple things you can measure in the blood and then again they can do things like symptoms which are very subjective but there aren't any trials that have showed that cinnamon really helps um there was one that showed that it helps with hyperglycemia though so if you're borderline type two you might consider it um yep but uh that being said if you find that it helps it's probably the placebo effect, but don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about muscle oh. muscle uh, inflammation from racing? Um, you, like massages, it, that was the whole theory behind massages. Ah! Uh, that if you take it, it will the reduce train, right? inflammation yeah, like, and help you. Well, yeah. I use it's why I use cinnamon for on this question was I know that uh, Ellen Lim, Lim from Scratch has cookbooks and he uses cinnamon because it's anti-inflammatory in and his tur- recipes turmeric mm-hmm. is, uh, is and turmeric carries the same the other thing yeah. the same principles but again I, I think you have to look back that like this is coming from 
what we're seeing in, in the lab and not necessarily in people. And so I don't think you could, just like we said with um, ibuprofen, though the idea is that it would reduce inflammation, there's actually worse outcomes in those people. Sure. Um, and again, ibuprofen and cinnamon are apparently affecting in, uh, inflammation in the same way. And inflammation is so broad, you know, like an mm-hmm. uh, ibuprofen is affecting one of like a thousand different parts of inflammation. Um, and it just so happens that that one is pretty effective when you have a headache or like some back pain. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's enough that we could we could definitively say that it's going to help. But if you put a little cinnamon in your coffee, cinnamon in your tea, it's not going to hurt. It's, yeah. You know, if it's like, especially if it's natural cinnamon and you're not worried about contaminants. So natural cinnamon. What Do you think massage helps? Now I'm muscular? worried about that. I, I feel like that one has to. I don't have any that good research it. on yeah. that, but I feel like that's yeah. got to help. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like it's like stretching. Draining metabolites and, uh, and yeah, you're that's getting in your things, territory. You're, yeah, you're yeah, moving yeah. things through the body and the yeah. lymph. and Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. 100%, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah, massage above all else. Okay. Hey, let's uh, let's end the year with a little bit of fun. It, it's not necessarily a game show, but we'll play the game show. Love that. We're gonna end the year with some predictions. Since most of us weren't weren't here, most of us weren't here for the proper end of the year. I'm really glad I broke that beer because I'm not speaking very well. <laughs> um, we're gonna play around with a little round of yeah, meh, or nah. I'm going to give you guys. Did you hear the gear spin at the end mm-hmm. of that? Uh, so cool. Mm-hmm. Lance is killing it. So I great he could make one for this he, segment and not for Sam. And not for Sam. Yeah. And it's not okay. for the, the theme. It's okay. He's Lance. working on it. The guy's got through the holidays. He's, He's got, got a gift, to do. that guy. Yeah, he does. He does. He's He's um, so I'm going to provide you guys with, with some predictions. And you're yep. going to tell me, yeah, as in, yeah, it's going to happen. Meh, probably, maybe, <laughs> meh, I don't know. Or nah, no, hell no. Okay? So. The first one came out in the last show, and my document smells like stout. Mm-hmm. Um, first one is Tade winning two Grand Tours. Paul Maine brought this one out in the last. Okay. Jackson Bolger, yeah, meh, or nah? Nah. Nah. He's going to win one. Oh, he's yeah, going to win gonna one. It's going to be a pink it's one. It's going to be a pink one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sam? Yeah. Nah. Nah? Same. Paul, my prediction. He's yeah, sticking with definitely. it. Yeah, and also the world championships. He's yeah. He said he's going to win. I would the, love for you to prove and me possibly, wrong. Possibly, wouldn't that be a beautiful? Point? Possibly yeah. the Olympics. Oh wow! Man. So that'd be the first time that's ever. Happened. David Tadebagachar is a professional bicycle racer. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes mm. wears stripes. Yeah. No. No. Mm. He's never never been has a world yet. No. No. Mm. Well, he does Unless wear sometimes on the bottom of his jersey white, red and blue stripes. Yeah. 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 He wears white. Yeah. Those and then the white. The jerseys, jersey yeah, man, nah. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, with Paul just because I've learned to respect your elders. They're usually right. So. Okay. <laughs> Second one, Cav winning a stage in the Tour de France this year. Jackson, uh, nah. nah, nah, yeah. So you're saying yeah, or yeah. you're you're agreeing with Jackson? No, you're saying yeah, Paul. I say nah because he'd be 39, and I think. That would be the oldest stage winner since 1960. How old was Valverde when he last won his? Uh, he, it's long been time. a long time. He yeah. won when he was younger. Not oh, in his won a lot of Weltas. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I did. think it was Escape Collective that actually made a prediction that he would return to the Pro Peloton. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he probably could. Valverde. I think, yeah. yeah. I'm going, yeah. You're going, yeah? Yeah. I want to see it. I, I want it to be, but I'm going to go meh because I just I don't want to curse it. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, Primos doing extremely well at Bora Hansgrohe. Yeah. Jackson. Yeah? Yeah. Meh. Meh? Yeah. Paul? Yeah, David? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. He's another bike <laughs> racer. Don't listen yeah, to Paul, me. Paul said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wout winning Flanders and Roubaix this year. Yeah. Jackson. Nah. Nah? I don't think, yeah. I don't think he does yeah. either. Yep. That's his goal. Yep. Mm-hmm. With With... Peter stepping off the stage, he's starting to fill <laughs> my heart. And so yeah, you know I think Wout can do anything. Yeah. I think I think Good Wout man. is riding it perfectly right yeah. now. Yeah. He's just mm. he's got one objective on the on the end. Uh, Peter Sagan winning Olympic gold on his mountain bike. Jackson Whee! nowhere near even close. Not even no. close. No, Paul. No. No. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> An American winning anything big this year, Jackson? 
in cycling though? Meh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Meh. <laughs> yeah. Got you clarified. There. Any? <laughs> I mean, who would have thought we had Sep? We got the, you know, we, we have the women too. Obviously. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, yeah. we have a few good women. I'm saying meh because like maybe meh, maybe yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I was going to say Allison Jackson, but she, she's, she's Canadian. Canadian. She's Canadian. Yeah. North American, I should have said. Yeah. 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 You said yeah. Me. You said, uh, I don't think so. I'd like to see it, but yeah. No. Sepp was such a gift. Well, I year. think Jorgensen, but he's on the wrong team now. He's on Yumbo. Yeah. I mean, Visma. Lisa Bice. Uh, Lisa Bice. Yeah. Are you saying they gifted it to Sepp? No. I'm <laughs> saying it was a gift that to us that he wanted. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say part man. Of me yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> <laughs> Another suspension for one of the Williams brothers, Jackson. Yeah, I I'm gonna say <laughs> I said Jackson. <laughs> yeah, and I think that one of them will step down this year. You're serious? I think so. Wow, that's nice a big one. I think well. the one that's not named Corey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I would agree with that. You would, Paul. <laughs> I'd say no. I don't think you don't. I think, think so. they've learned a lesson. Yeah. I think yeah. David, do you know who they are? Yeah, you know, I, I think no as well. I think they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have their Jesus. own prediction they would like to go out on a limb and and make a bold prediction for 2024? That's I asked you guys to do this as homework. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Oh, I got no. it. Doesn't I got sound it. like any of it. I think, that, I think that this year is going to be the year that um, the UAE and Visma Lisa bike uh, – plane is rather evened okay. i think sep is gonna win a second vuelta wow. oh that'd be cool that's a bold one <laughs> paul i i think uh kian uh uta brooks yeah will be on the podium at in the Giro. okay the okay movies. david that's what i was gonna say but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you sit right next to the perfect person i do show. yes yeah, i do yeah, yeah. uh but you know what I was thinking? Also, he's the closest Maybe. to the task. You couldn't yeah. say Uta Brooks. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't say it. Um, but maybe I think that Garrett Thomas will get some not ugly glasses this year. Oh, yeah. Though no, I love the guy. No, those glasses are those. terrible. The they, they designed those ones to take Off over his, his Oakleys. Oakleys. Yeah. He needs white frames. He will only ever rock that. There's a they tw- can be style. white. They just. <laughs> the there size. used to be a Twitter account. I don't. Yeah. I'm not on Twitter anymore. That was just Garrett Thomas glasses. Yeah. yeah. It's a whole thing. I think we will have a different tour winner this year. Wow. That's mm. my bold that's my bold. Do statement. you have a person in mind or are you nope. just Okay. Not that good at it. Yeah. By the way, I just came up with a segment that Jackson needs to lead. <gasps> and I you don't even know this just I just wrote it down. Okay. I, I want a new segment called Style Points with Jackson. Oh. Yeah. I mean, okay. look at this right now. Right. The corduroy New York Yankees The hat. shirt. The I rocket, rocket power, power shirt. shirt. Yeah. For those of yeah. you watching online, he's wearing a rocket power shirt. Can anybody name all the rocket power characters? No. I don't even know what the hell that is. No. Squid, <laughs> Reggie, Otto, and I don't know the other guy. The main guy? The No, Otto's down at the bottom. The other guy. Oh, the, that dude. Yeah, I can't remember his name. That's amazing that you know that. Yeah, well, I watched a lot with my son. Yeah. Huh. What's his name, Jackson? Do you remember? Squid. I don't know. No, Squid's over here. Squid's got the shark helmet on. Why is it oh, an end? I don't know. I was like five. I knew more than you. Wow. Well, I was like, That's like, like I said. naming the freakies of freaky cereal. Yeah. yeah. And I, I want to. These guys s- would never I, know what I, that I, is. I, yeah. I think a segment of for Paul should just be just a rocking chair on a porch. Yeah. That's yeah. Perfect. Old Give man rants. Some old man rants. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, I. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> you know, he's like glee. He's just so <laughs> that's, happy. It's me. It would be good. Well, I spilled the beer. I broke the first glass of 2024, and it was these that's wonderful good glasses. Luck. It was these wonderful glasses that my daughter-in-law had made for me, mm-hmm. and so I broke one. Mm. It's all good. Sorry, Maria. And there's broken glass on uh, my bar. Yeah. You got another one. Well, oh, that one's stuck. Oh, am I on a live show? Yeah. I should probably <laughs> shut the hell up. <laughs> And not worry about it. Hey, you guys, um, first of all, everybody, thanks for being here. It's nice Thank to you. have the whole crew yeah. with us here. Be sure and check out the Beer Mile on video on YouTube. Um, mm. it, is, it is the most beautiful train wreck you've seen in 2023. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast as well as our YouTube channel. Tell a friend and check out our website for all the fun we are bringing for 2024. Keep the rubber side down. David is starting to swerve back and forth on his po- on his stool, which means he needs to go potty potty. Pity potty. Elf on the shelf <laughs> needs to go pee. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thanks.